As the crew of Seeker progresses on their expedition to raise awareness for ocean health, they must brave rough weather and long hours of strenuous duties in tight quarters. Being on this boat is a bit like being in a spaceship. What I miss the most from land is all the sounds, all the smells, music in the street, uh, cars, voices of people that you don't know, the smell of good food, the smell of cheese, all the fresh products. Members of the crew keep themselves sane with strict routines, secret snack stashes, books, movies, and games. But the games that swimmer Ben Lecomte has designed for himself are much more than entertainment. They help keep his mind occupied through eight hours of swimming. It's not a game that they can teach to a person. It's hard to explain, but it's using pictures that represent to me some certain numbers and making a series of numbers that I remember by the pictures. When Ben swam the Atlantic in 1998, solitude and exertion took such a toll on him that he took a six-day hiatus in the Azores. Now, with a bigger support crew and a family waiting for him at home, he's learned to lay out his thoughts for the day like an outfit. Go back to the previous day and uh, try to uh, focus on what went well and what uh, I could improve. Then after that first hour, when I am warm, I am at the right pace and uh, I will uh, pick uh, another subject up. My son never windsurf. So for me, one activity that I would like to do with him is to uh, teaching how to windsurf. I go through all the detail that will bring me there and, uh, and try to live that moment with them. Not only does Ben have these mental games, but he's also being watched closely by machine learning specialist Eduardo Marquez. I was wondering if we are able to understand the balance between fatigue and performance. I want to, to, to understand which kind of variables in terms of sociological, in terms of physiological, psychological, and environmental, the effects, Ben's performance, and Ben's fatigue. To get a baseline reading of his personality and anxiety levels, Ben took some initial evaluations, where he scored high on visualization and resilience. You can see that the cognitive scale is 17, the somatic scale is 9, and the self-confidence is 27. So Ben is, uh, has a um, more or less high level confidence and a low uh, anxiety level so far. Every day, the crew captures videos and photographs of Ben after his swim to send to Eduardo. You need to take uh, one image from Ben, the, the entire body, just to analyze the posture, and another one just to the top uh, view of, of Ben uh, to analyze the facial expression. Also a small video log where Ben is able just to look at the camera and express what he's feeling, what he's doing. The first step of this is uh, to try to extract meaningful information from all these sources. Human activity recognition, the idea is to try to understand human behavior with the different sources that you might have. For images and video, I'm using computer vision techniques to extract Ben's emotions. We'll have uh, data from his nutrition, from his physiological uh, condition, the interaction between Ben and the crew. We'll have the weather conditions, the sea conditions, the wind conditions. We will have also uh, the logbook, the distance that Ben was able to travel uh, on that day. Eduardo's model will measure the relationships among these variables and verify which combinations affect Ben's mental health the most. He will work with psychological analysis expert Sebastian Montel to check if the model's predictions are correct, allowing the program to learn and improve over time. For instance, does waiting out bad weather like a typhoon increase Ben's mental fatigue or jumpstart his motivation? It was a little bit a few weeks ago when we had like rough weather and it just stay here on deck, screaming at the ocean. But this was very, very impressive, very powerful. It wasn't a depressed uh, scream, it was really like, yeah, we're gonna do it, wow! I've never felt depressed or low. Of course, there is a moment that is very difficult and challenging, but I uh, look at it in a bigger picture. I think Ben 
holds himself really well together mentally. Uh, swimming through all the plastic really motivates Ben to keep going. The fact that uh, since day one we've been seeing trash everywhere, every day, I, I think for him has been very, very sobering. Uh, he knows that every stroke he does, just one more step forward to raise awareness on these issues. It's reinforced my uh, determination and my conviction about the problem that we have with marine plastic debris. Be sure to visit seeker.com slash the swim to read daily updates from Ben Lecomte, track his progress in real time, and watch more videos about the science happening on board Seeker. Click here for this next episode, and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching.